Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani channel, we bring another episode for you today in which we will be discussing about another such individual from the past who was boastful, who was arrogant, who was oppressive, who was cunning, who was deceiving and who met his doom and became perished. Who this individual was, what were his state of affairs, all this inshallah we will cover in our today's episode before we proceed any further let's first of all listen to the virtue of sending peace and salutation upon the noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has said that the best of days is friday it is on this day that sayyiduna adam alayhi salam was created it is on this day that his blessed soul was taken it is on this day that the trumpet will be blown and it is on this day that the catastrophe will occur i.e. the day of judgment will take place on this day therefore increase in your sending of salat upon me on this day on this day send salutations upon me more and more for your salat your sending of salutations upon me is presented to me Upon this, the Sahaba alayhim waridwan, they asked that, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and how will salat upon you be presented to you after you have passed away? He sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam replied, Indeed, Allah Almighty has prohibited the earth from consuming the bodies of the prophets. So dear viewers of Madani channel, we come to know a few beautiful facts over here. One, that the beloved Prophet sallam still hears us. He is aware of the fact when we send salat upon him, when we recite peace and salutations upon him, when we send blessings upon him, he is aware of it. And we also come to know that the noble Prophets wasalam, are alive in their graves. The graves do not consume the bodies of the Prophets. So try to recite Salat upon the Prophet as much as you can. Insha'Allah this will be a means of great blessings for you, for all of us in this world and in the hereafter. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So dear viewers of Madani channel, today we'll be talking about such a person whose rule did not last for very long but he was very oppressive and cunning person. He was such an individual who would kill any person who will not listen to him. This is how cruel he was. As in, if he commanded to do something evil, something that was absolutely wrong, something that was unethical, and if the other person, he did not carry out his command and did not agree to execute the command, the evil command that he would have given, then he, Ma'adullah, would kill the other person. Who was this evil person? Who was the possessor of this evil habit? It was an individual called Mukhtar Saqafi. Insha'Allah Zawajal today, we will be talking about this tyrant and oppressive individual. How? He went about his affairs and how deceiving he was, how cunning he was, and how cruel he was to other people. Dear of Madani channel, Mukhtar Saqafi, he belonged to the tribe of Saqif. 
and he was also referred to as Kisan. So he was also called Kisan. Now, Sayyiduna Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a great companion, a legendary companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. His son, who was a tabi'i, Sayyiduna Muhammad bin Ammar rahimahullah. Once Mukhtar Saqafi, he went to him one day and said, Relay to me a false hadith in relation to your father, Sayyiduna Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu an. So basically, Mukhtar Saqafi over here wanted Muhammad bin Ammar rahimahullah to mention a hadith that would uh, be in support of Mukhtar Saqafi. And Mukhtar Saqafi asked him to narrate that hadith on the authority of his father, Sayyiduna Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala an. Before we proceed any further, dear viewers of Madani Channel, let me mention that associating a lie, something that is lie, untrue, with the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is from amongst the major sins. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated that he who associates a lie to me deliberately should make his abode in the hell. This is the reason why the blessed companions, tabi'een, tab'i tabi'een, the pious predecessors, Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'een, would observe extreme caution when it came to mentioning a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So anyhow, Mukhtar Saqafi over here, he wanted a fake narration to be relayed to serve his own evil purposes. But Sayyiduna Muhammad bin Ammar rahimahullah, he was the son of a great legendary companion, Sayyiduna Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala an. He denied the request of the accursed Mukhtar Saqafi and proved that he was the true, loyal, devoted and obedient son of his father Sayyiduna Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So someone who was brought up by Sayyiduna Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, how could he mention a false narration to serve the evil purposes of someone who's engrossed in the love of this world and whose goal, whose aim is to acquire the wealth of this world. Anyhow, Mukhtar Saqafi, he kept insisting and insisting and he wanted Sayyiduna Muhammad bin Ammar rahimahullah to just mention any false narration which would be narrated on the authority of Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anhu so that he could fulfill his evil uh, purposes, he could fulfill his evil plans. Anyhow, Sayyiduna Muhammad bin Ammar rahimahullah, he uh, remained steadfast and persistent in saying no to him. And he stayed loyal to his father, to the deen of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Ultimately, as a consequence of this, Mukhtar Saqafi had Sayyiduna Muhammad bin Ammar rahimahullah martyred. Now, dear viewers of Madani Channel, what was his fault? Why was he rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi martyred only because he didn't relay a false and fabricated narration associating to the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that would suit the needs and evil plans of Mukhtar Saqafi? Just because he stayed and remained steadfast and persistent upon the deen, upon the religion of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just because he stood firm and determined on the right path, this is what his crime was? Unfortunately, the accursed Mukhtar Saqafi, he martyred Sayyiduna Muhammad bin Ammar rahimahullah because of this very reason. So already we can get a gist of how cruel and oppressive and evil this person Mukhtar Saqafi he was. Now Mukhtar Saqafi, he played another trick. He came across another evil tactic because he was engrossed in the love of this world and he wanted to establish his own rule and power over the land of Kufa. And for this purpose, he needed the people of Kufa to accept his allegiance. So what he did was that he persuaded the people of Kufa to accept his allegiance. And what he would do in return? That he would capture and punish those who martyred Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Because remember that the era 
that we're talking about the era of Mukhtar Saqafi, this was after the martyrdom of Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So this is a trick that he played, that he persuaded people to accept his allegiance by saying that I will capture those people and I will hold them to account. I will take revenge from them for martyring Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So upon this, the people of Kufa, they started to take the allegiance of Mukhtar Saqafi, the accursed. But then another twist comes over here when Mukhtar Saqafi, he gets imprisoned. But nevertheless, Mukhtar Saqafi, who belonged to the tribe of Saqif, he was very cunning and deceiving person. And he managed to escape from that uh, imprisonment through cheat and deception and freed himself from there. Now, he attained freedom and he was out of the prison through his um, cheatful and deceitful tactics, through his cunning tactics. Now, what he does is that he makes sure that his conspiracies, they don't die down. And he started the uh, campaign again in the people of Kufa for them to accept his allegiance. So again, he started to persuade people to accept his allegiance through saying all kind of deceiving and cunning things. Now, dear viewers of Madani channel, it is generally observed that whenever someone creates a scene, then normally the people around, they just gather around to see what's going on. And same was the case with Mukhtar Saqafi, because he, as mentioned before and several times, that he was a cunning person and he knew these tactics. So when he was persuading people to accept his allegiance, he planned all this in such a way that people they thought that something new is coming up, something new is happening, and there was a lot of a uh, fuss that was created about uh, this very action of his. So many people, they gathered from all around, and they also fell into his trap and started to accept his allegiance. Now, Mukhtar Saqafi, over here, he played another trick to capture the rule over Kufa. What he did was, that he divided Muslims into two groups and they made both those groups fight each other and he made both of them kill one another and when in the midst of all this when all this was happening Mukhtar Saqafi he succeeded in controlling the rule of Kufa so you can see that how many cunning tricks he played just to get rule of Kufa, he even went to the extent of creating division amongst Muslims. And not only this, he made those both groups enemies of each other. And Ma'adullah, he made them kill one another. And in the midst of all this, when people were all uh, bothered and worried about these fights and killings amongst those two groups, this is where he played his another cunning trick and took over the control of Kufa. Now Sayyidatuna Asma binti Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhuma has narrated that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated that there will be a very big liar and oppressive person in the tribe of Thaqif. Now Sayyidatuna Allama Nabawi rahimahullah has stated in the commentary of this hadith that the noble scholars have consensus over the fact that the liar and oppressive person being mentioned in this hadith is none other than Mukhtar Saqafi. So we come to know that the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had foretold this um, very uh, account that this will take place and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had given the news of the future, something that was going to take place in future regarding Mukhtar Saqafi. And a scholar like Imam Nabawi rahimahullah, he is clarifying for us, he is explaining this hadith to us that noble scholars, they all have consensus over the fact that the liar and oppressive person mentioned in this hadith refers to none other than Mukhtar Saqafi. Now, there's another evil uh, action, another evil thing that Mukhtar Saqafi fell prey to. Of course, he was a very big liar. We all know that. But now, you can get a gist of how big a liar he was from the fact that he claimed 
that Sayyiduna Jibra'il alayhi salatu wasalam comes to me. So his lies, his conspiracies, his cunning approach was not only limited uh, to taking over the rule of Kufa, but he even he surpassed all the boundaries. And he went to the extent of claiming that Ma'adullah Sayyiduna Jibra'il Amin alayhi salatu wasalam comes to me with wahi. Now in other words, Mukhtar Sakafi, he claimed prophethood, he claimed Nabuwa, dear viewers of Madani channel. Remember that the Holy Prophet وسلم, is the final prophet of Allah Almighty. He is the seal of prophethood. The verses of the Holy Quran clearly mention about the finality of the prophethood of the Holy Prophet After the beloved Prophet وسلم, now there cannot be anyone, any kind of prophet who can come now in any shape or any form, it is impossible. The beloved Prophet وسلم, was the final Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone who claims to be a Prophet or to have prophethood after the beloved Prophet وسلم, is Dajjal, is Kazab, a liar, and is excluded from the folds of Islam. Remember this, never ever it is possible now for any other Prophet to come because the beloved Prophet وسلم, is the final messenger, is the final Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the seal upon prophethood and no other Prophet would now come after the Holy Prophet وسلم, and those who Allah have belief in this false ideology that Allah, there is a possibility of any other Prophet or Allah, any other Prophet has come after the beloved Prophet والسلام, are excluded from the folds of Islam. The teacher of Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, Hafiz ibn Abi Sheba rahimahumullah, narrates a narration on the authority of Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu an. He states that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that the hour, i.e. the day of judgment, will not come until 30 kazabs do not come, until 30 liars do not come. Now amongst them is also Musaylma Kazab and Mukhtar Sakafi, the same very Mukhtar Sakafi whom we are talking about today. And once Sayyidina Ibn Umar عن, was asked about Mukhtar Saqafi that he says that revelations get revealed to me. Upon this Sayyidina Ibn Umar عن, he responded that undoubtedly Satan puts such whispers, such thoughts in the hearts of his friends. So dear viewers of Madani channel, we come to know that Mukhtar Saqafi he surpassed all the bounds and he did not only cross all the boundaries of being oppressive and tyrant, but he even went to the extent of claiming prophethood and was excluded from the folds of Islam. Now dear viewers of Madani channel, let us mention another very interesting fact of Mukhtar Saqafi to you. Mukhtar Saqafi, he had a chair which he considered to be very blessed. And what is the story behind this? Let's listen about this. Talking about the reality of this chair, the great historian Imam Ibn Jarir Tabari rahimahullah states that Tufail bin Yada states that I was very poor and destitute. I came to my neighbor and saw that he has a very old and worn out chair upon which he is sitting. I took the chair from him and took it away with me. And I thought to myself, that let me inform Mukhtar Saqafi about this. So I told him that my father Yada used to sit on this chair. This chair is very blessed and carries far reaching intellectual benefits. So Mukhtar said to him that that's fine, give this chair to me. And Mukhtar Saqafi, he paid him 12,000 dirhams in exchange of that chair. Now, Mukhtar Saqafi, he had the possession of the chair and what he did was he had it properly cleaned, it was made fragrant and he got it uh, polished elegantly for it to be shining. 
Now, Mukhtar Sakafi, he covered this chair with a piece of cloth and brought it in his coat. And in his coat, there were his courtiers as well. And he said to his courtiers that Allah Almighty blessed Bani Israel with the sign of Tabut Sakina, the Ark of Covenant. In the same way, Allah Almighty has blessed me with this sign, i.e., the chair. So Ma'adullah Mukhtar Sakafi was comparing this chair to Tabute Sakina, the Ark of Covenant of Bani Israel. And he was trying to compare himself with those blessed individuals of Bani Israel who were blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Tabute Sakina. And he was saying that the way they were blessed through Tabute Sakina, in the same way I'm also blessed through this chair. So you can see how cunning and deceiving he was. What a major liar he was. That um, Mukhtar Sakafi, how elegantly and shamelessly he was mentioning such a big lie, such a baseless fact. You can imagine how shameless Mukhtar Sakafi he was. But dear viewers of Madani Channel, this lie of Mukhtar Sakafi gives us an alarming message that lying is not the practice of the true devotees of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam. It is not practiced by true Muslims. Rather, it is an action of the Jal, a liar, a transgressor, and of those who are accursed. If any of us, if any of us by any chance are indulged in this heinous act of lying, then we should sincerely repent from it and come to the right path, to the right path of truthfulness, to the path of piety. So coming back to the topic, dear viewers of Madani Channel, Mukhtar Sakafi, he wouldn't leave any opportunity to ensure uh, that he executes his cunning plans and he deceives people through lies, etc. Eventually, at the age of 67, on 14th Ramadan al-Mubarak, 67 Hijrah, this accursed person, who's known as Mukhtar Sakafi, he was killed. It is said that he ruled over Kufa for around eight months and fought wars with Muslims in three different areas. So to keep his rule, he had to keep Muslims busy fighting with one another. So this is how he ruled over Kufa, although it remained only for eight months. But even during these eight months, he remained busy in fighting against Muslims in three areas. With Banu Umayyah in Syria, with the descendants of Sayyidina Zubair an, in Hijaz, and at another place with another uh, tribe of Muslims. So he remained busy in fighting with those Muslims in uh, these different areas and he ruled over Kufa for a period of eight months. But eventually, dear viewers of Madani Channel, this accursed and evil person met his end. He was killed. Two brothers from the army of Mas'ab bin Zubair, Tarfa and Tarab, they both executed him and sent his head to Mas'ab bin Zubair. So this is the dreadful end that Mukhtar Saqafi, he met and he became a lesson for the rest of the world. And what those people did was that they cut one hand of Mukhtar Saqafi off and they nailed it at a place in Kufa. When Hajjad bin Yusuf, who was also from the tribe of Saqif, when he came into rule, he took that uh, nailed hand of Mukhtar Saqafi from there and he buried it. So this is how the hand of Mukhtar Saqafi was not uh, visible or available for people to see anymore that was buried by Hajjad bin Yusuf during his rule. So dear viewers of Madani channel, this false claimant of prophethood, the one who would mention fabricated and false accounts to people and who was a grave liar, the one who would kill people due to them not listening to him, the one who Allah created divisions amongst the Muslims, who Allah fought with Muslims, who killed Muslims, and who made Muslims kill one another. Mukhtar Saqafi finally met his dreadful end.
Now, over here, dear viewers of Madani Channel, there's another narration that mentions that Mukhtar Saqafi also performed some good actions, such as he took revenge from those who martyred Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, made them an admonitory lesson for the rest of the world. But remember that there's also a hadith that states that Allah Almighty takes the work of deen from a transgressor as well, but he has no share in it. He made false claims of prophethood and due to this, he became deserving of the hellfire forever and ever. So dear viewers of Madani channel, even if we go by this very narration in which it is stated that he did perform some good actions as well, but it is unanimously agreed that Mukhtar Saqafi, he Allah, claimed prophethood as well. He claimed to be a prophet as well. Hence, he was excluded from the folds of Islam and he died in the same state as well and made himself deserving to be in the hellfire forever and ever. Hellfire became eternal abode for him. So this tyrant, liar, cunning, deceiving, oppressive individual, he met such a dreadful end that is a great admonitory lesson for all of us today. And again, it all links back to the same point that he had grudge and animosity in his heart against Islam. He created division amongst the Muslims. He made Muslims fight one another. He made Muslims kill one another. And he himself also executed killings of the Muslims. And he was someone who's known as Kadhab, as one of the biggest liars in history. So we should ensure that we ourselves stay away from these evil acts of lying, deceiving people, creating divisions amongst people, creating animosity and grudges in the hearts of people, etc., etc., if we want to attain salvation in both worlds. Because otherwise, all the traits that we've spoken about to be refrained from are of those who Allah disobeyed Allah Almighty, the likes of Mukhtar Saqafi. We don't want to follow the path of the likes of Mukhtar Saqafi, we want to follow the path of the likes of Imam Ali Maqam, Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala, of those who are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah Almighty is also pleased with them. May Allah Almighty keep us on the right path, on the path of those with whom He is pleased and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to refrain from following the path of those upon whom He Almighty casted his wrath. Insha'Allah Zawajal, we will be back with another episode of Parish Kings of the Past where we will discuss another individual, another evil king of the past who met his doom, who is now perished. Until then, take very good care of yourself and keep watching Madani channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Life is not guaranteed at all But death is absolutely guaranteed upon all Life is not guaranteed at all But death is absolutely guaranteed upon all Life is not guaranteed at all but Death is absolutely guaranteed upon